Hello everybody, it's Donna. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be playing with a gel press that I got for Christmas. I have used one before. I actually had borrowed it from my sister and I think she wanted it back because she bought me one for Christmas. So today I'm going to be using the gel press with some Distress Oxide inks and some stencils in embossing folders. Now I know you can do a lot with the, the gel press using paint etc but I'm just going to be sticking with the Distress Oxide inks and some stencils and embossing folders. Now I already had done some previously. I do have some tags cut out there ready, some envelopes, some uh, just some paper and some cardstock ready to go and I'm just going to start playing around with it. I do. I am going to be working on a junk journal that's going to be mostly pinks. I do have another one that's going to be, or in my, the back of my mind, I have one that's going to be kind of purplish or lilac colors. So I wanted to stick to the pinks and the lilacs, and then I had to throw in some yellow because yellow is my one of my well, yellow is my favorite color, even though I don't really work with it too often. So I just started by putting down some ink. I believe this is probably worn lipstick. And then I used my brayer to make it smooth and then putting on a, I think it's Tim Holtz stencil on top of it. Then I'm going to grab one of my tags, lay it down on top, place a sheet of plain typing paper on top and use my brayer to take the impression. Now these paste pieces of paper, the white pieces of paper that I'm using that are technically look like they're scrap. I will put them aside because I could use them in collage or something else. Okay, so there's the impression of the first one. Now I know I didn't want it all white in the background like that, so I am going to remove my stencil and then put the tag right back down on top of it to pick up some more of the ink. You can usually get several impressions each time you lay down your ink. Well, it's probably better with the paint because paint you can blend and do other things. With the Distress Oxides, I didn't want to contaminate my ink pad. So for blending, you would, I'd always had to leave a space and just used my brayer to blend it out. And there, that's a lot more pleasing to me to have some of that white gone. Now it doesn't look like it, but there's actually a lot of ink still left on that. I probably could have taken another impression and just kept layering it up, but I'm just using my scrap of white typing paper and just going to pick it up with that. And that is quite a bit of ink on there. Now I'm going to put down some more ink and using a stencil. I'm going to do basically the same thing, only I'm going to take an impression first onto the tag just to make it the tag so the tag's not completely white. And then I'm going to lay down the stencil and take the impression off of that. I'm just going to speed this up a little bit because you don't need to see me do everything so slowly. So I'm just going to speed it up just a tiny little bit. Okay, so for this one, I laid down some ink but did remove one single impression before stamping the tag into it. Now I put down some more ink, put the stencil on top, and took another impression. Now I'm just using an old envelope that I was fooling around with to take some of that color off. Laid down some more ink. This time though, I'm going to be using an embossing folder. Press that in so it left the design in the ink, and then using a CD holder to pick up the, the ink. I did use the envelope again just so I can remove some of the ink and I might be able to do something with that envelope later. Okay, so now I'm going to do some blending. I'm using a fired brick, picked raspberry and worn lipstick. I'm just going to put little bands of color down on my gel press and keeping a little space in between them because I don't want to contaminate my inks with a different color and then using my brayer to just blend them together. Now I'm using a different stencil, just laying it down on top, grabbing a piece of cardstock this time, just plain cardstock, and just taking an impression off of that. Now 
Now you can see again the background is very white, but I mean that could be what you what you want. But by putting it back on top, on top, I kind of get an impression of the same thing twice, but one's going to be uh, just different because you're getting the the ink that was underneath it, so you're getting like a negative print. And there, there, there. Now to me, that looks a lot better to have some of that white gone. I'm just going to remove the ink from the center of my CD holders. And that's very simple to do. It only took a second to remove that. And I think those turned out really, really pretty. I'm going to have a following video that shows how I decorated them for use in a junk journal. From here on out, most of what I'm doing is a repeat or self-explanatory. So I'm just going to let the video play at high speed. I do want to mention that I am a Stamping Up demonstrator. I do not, I'm not affiliated with any other companies except for Stamping Up. So I do not promote or sell any of their products, anybody else's products except for Stamping Up. My link is on screen as well as in the comments below to my online Stamping Up store. I also wanted to mention that, yes, I still make card making videos and I will be making card making videos in the future, in the near future. I am just waiting for a really big order to come in from Stamping Up, which has a lot of the new product from the new mini catalog. I will be doing an unboxing probably within a week or so from that order and I'll be showing you everything that I was able to acquire and hopefully shortly after that I will have some stamping up card making videos uh, coming out. Here's what I came up with today. Those are just the two envelopes that I was playing around with. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with those yet, um, but I did do a couple of those just picking up the extra impressions. Those are the cardstock ones. Some of them are using stencils. That's theirs from the Argyle embossing folder. That one's just using circle stencils, I guess, that I cut out and just put on top. Another one, Argyle. Another stencil, I believe that was. And an, an embossing folder. And also another one from Stamping Up. I also had some already done in tag shape, so I did those ones as well. And then as well as some of these CD holders. Now these are just the ones I made today. I did make more that you'll you'll see bits and pieces of them, of them in the future. And there are some of the purple ones that I came up with. There's one that's been blended. As I said, I am making a junk journal all out of pinks and another one out of lavenders at some point. I am already working on the pink one, so those pink ones will be used in that. And these are the yellow ones that I did. And then it's a little bit of scraps that I just cut off that I didn't maybe didn't like the whole thing. And a couple of CD holders. I also had these left over that uh, were either out of paper or just extras or scraps that I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with. So that's it for today. Please stay tuned for 
further videos on how what I made out of these as well as a video on my next junk journal. Thanks for watching and stay safe.